take three now. Beer is gonna help or not. I don't care at this point. For real, this time we're doing it live. This is the What You Miss Weekly. Oh my God, my eyes popped. My name is Edmund, and if you're looking for some serious news, then you better go somewhere else. Buckle up and let's get into the What You Missed Weekly. First of all, Pokimane has a boyfriend? I actually really don't give a f and neither should you, but I did find it funny because all of a sudden a Twitch streamer gets a boyfriend and the simps go, you know what? Cancel culture isn't so bad after all. You wanna know what really is crazy though? Jake Paul's house got raided by the FBI on Friday. When it comes to the Paul brothers, everyone's first reaction is to think they're doing something for attention. I don't know, man. If you ask me, nobody gets their house raided by the FBI for a little bit of internet clout. It turns out he wasn't home and no arrests were made, but a large number of firearms were seized, including a long gun which was found leaning on a hot tub in his backyard. Additionally, we have reports that one of Jake's acquaintances named Armani Izadi had his house in Las Vegas raided on the same morning. This Izadi guy is not only Jake's buddy, but apparently he's some sort of a pimp. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I've heard that this Izadi guy has told some young girls that they could join Team 10 as long as he sleeps with him and Jake. Nobody knows what's going on, but it's looking pretty bad and we're just gonna have to wait and see. So speaking of streamers and influencers, we finally have an update to Dr. Disrespect's Twitch ban saga. On Thursday, August 6th, Disrespect teased at a possible return to streaming via an Instagram Live. Dr. Disrespect may return to streaming as soon as today. This is some big, big news from the two-time streamer of the year. And thankfully, here at VSM News, our sources are actually legit. And this is your VSM News. Shortly after, fans discovered that he had added a join button to his YouTube page. He has no exclusivity deal with any platform at the moment, except for exclusively being banned from Twitch, of course. His YouTube stream went live to a stagnant splash screen of a gas station for nearly 24 hours. Hundreds of thousands of people looked at that static image for hours in anticipation for the doctor to return to the streaming. Why did I say it like that? He finally made his appearance the next day and over 500,000 concurrent viewers showed up probably in hopes of finding out what the fuck is going on with your band. You wanna know the reason? Well, too fucking bad, so do I. I mean, this guy must have gotten his medical degree as a urologist because he really knows how to tease some balls. While he did address the elephant in the room, he didn't say anything that he hasn't before. We still have no idea. We have no idea. Yeah, right, dude. Yeah, right. Dr. Disrespect also doesn't have a very clean history. He was notorious for being at the center of many controversies, including live streaming inside of a public bathroom at last year's E3, defending his use of gibberish to mock Asian languages, and has shared debunked COVID-19 conspiracy theories on his stream. Dr. Disrespect had this to say. There's big money involved, so let the legal professionals do what they need to do. That's it. Period. My conscience, I feel so good. Really? Leave it to the lawyers? I don't know. If you ask me, I find it pretty hard to believe that this guy doesn't have any clue as to why he might be banned. You guys tell me. Do you guys think he's a liar or not? Let me know in the comments below. So moving on from that story, let's talk less about streamers who play games and more about the actual games and the consoles that we play them on. With press conferences for both PlayStation and Xbox having concluded, we finally have an idea of what's coming down the line for the next gen. You know fanboys from every corner are just eager to ready their pitchforks and engage in the next great console war. However, there's been a lot of talk about how the major game companies are no longer even after the same market. In fact, Xbox says that they don't even see Sony as their main competitor, but rather Amazon and Google. Google? You mean the Stadia? Bro, the Stadia is so uninteresting that the boss of Forknife doesn't even want to put his game on it. And, and that says a lot because you can really play 
fork knife on a toaster if you wanted to, as long as it's running Android. Sounds to me like Xbox knows they can't compete with Miles Morales as Spider-Man. What do you guys think? Sony really doubled down in the Spider-Man department as they decided to make Spider-Man a PlayStation exclusive character for the new Square Enix Marvel Avengers game, much to the dismay of many gamers on other platforms. This is a pretty shitty thing. People don't like this. You guys aren't even after the same market, right? Stop holding us hostage. So anyways, the war is over. Or so at least I thought it was. But apparently when you're exiled to New Zealand, you get kind of bored and you feel like stirring shit up. This is what Gabe Newegg, yeah, that guy who made that thing that you download your PC games from. Th this is what he had to say when asked about his console of choice. PlayStation and Xbox are both coming out with new consoles. Which is better? Uh, the Xbox. Really? Why? Uh, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> because you used to work for Microsoft? I, I mean, I guess, yeah, that's it. The PC Master Race Overlord has spoken. It's over. Since we're talking about PCs, might as well mention that Konami is coming out with a new line of gaming PCs in Japan. But we really don't care about Konami after what they did to Kojima. Fuck you guys. We want Silent Hills. What were we talking about? All oh, right, Xbox. So I suppose it's worthy to mention that Halo Infinite multiplayer was confirmed to be free to play immediately after the information had been leaked and rumored about online. That would be pretty exciting if I actually had any idea what the multiplayer looked like and if I was ever planning on getting an Xbox to begin with. On the other hand, Sony's console is doing marvelously. Ghost of Tsushima is their fastest selling first party new IP. The game was also massively successful in Japan and Sucker Punch received some pretty big praise from the legendary director of the Yakuza games who said, it's the kind of work made by non-Japanese people that makes you feel like they're even more Japanese than us. I think it's amazing. We often believe Western people would never get certain Japanese things, but the game shows this way of thinking is wrong in the first place. And yes, since you're asking, you can pet the foxes in Ghost of Tsushima. Okay, so we talked a little bit about Xbox. We talked a little bit about Sony. Let's take a look at what's going on in the special world of the big N in this little section that I like to call why Nintendo fans deserve less. Nintendo's latest earnings report is out and they are simply just moving massive units. The Switch came out in 2017 and has sold over 61.44 million units, just about to overtake the NES for the third highest selling Nintendo console. Animal Crossing has now sold over 22.4 million units, making it the second highest selling Nintendo Switch game. So the first highest selling Switch game is actually Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That thing actually came bundled with a lot of consoles, but more importantly, that game also came out in 2017. Animal Crossing New Horizons came out in March of this year. Going along with the massive success of Animal Crossing, New Horizons received a second wave for their summer update, which adds fireworks and save backups. But most importantly, it brings back the Dream Suite. Despite these efforts from the Animal Crossing devs, some Nintendo fans have decided to act like entitled brats and bully the game's director into deleting her Twitter account. This isn't even the first instance of Nintendo fans engaging in cyberbullying towards game creators. Do I have to remind you about that time that Waluigi fans harassed Sakurai for not putting him in Smash Brothers? Speaking of Sakurai, that man is an absolute saint. And it was just his 50th birthday. And he decided that he was going to give us gifts. That's right, this ungrateful bunch. Sakurai revealed a surprise update to Smash Ultimate, which includes a brand new stage and the ability to set any song from any stage while you're playing on FD or Battlefield. So I have two takeaways from all of this. And the first is that all of these improvements and quality of life changes means to me that not only are they listening to the general feedback of what players want, but Sakurai also directly recognized the popularity of competitive play with his inclusion of small battlefield. It's a small step, but it's a step nonetheless for the community. Secondly, the fact that they had time for such an update tells me that Sakurai and company are doing pretty well from home. They're either on schedule or even ahead of schedule for the next Fighter Pass character. I think it's also important that we talk about how the industry is changing and in particular, how that's affecting E3 right now. 
So this year, E3 got canceled by COVID, obviously, just like everything else. That's no surprise. However, shortly after the event was canceled, we saw E3 saying that, that they intended to rebrand as a fan, media, and influencer festival. Companies are starting to realize that they don't need to pay money for boots when they can live stream their own events, kind of like a Nintendo has. Y you know, Nintendo, always on the cutting edge. My body is ready. But, but seriously, the numbers have been way higher than they ever have. Very likely that we won't even see E3 next year. Things have gotten so bad for E3 that even before 2020 was canceled, the company they hired as the creative director quit after five weeks. And then finally, Jeff Keighley, who is famous for the E3 Coliseum, has even bowed out, essentially driving the final nail in the coffin. Speaking of Jeff, you may also know about some of his other projects like the Game Awards, which is essentially the Emmys of gaming. And in this past Game Awards, he revealed his latest endeavor, the Summer Games. Games Fest. The Summer Games Fest, it, it started in May and it's going through August. It's going right now. Apparently one of their big announcements from this event recently was that Cuphead was coming to the PS4. And I mean, what the f I thought Cuphead was on every other platform. It's like on the Switch already. So if it's on the Switch, I just kind of assume. Hey, I, congrats, I guess. That's a win for, for Cuphead fans. It's a good game. Let's move on to tech because I want to talk about a company that's been making waves in more ways than one. So as you probably know, Donald Trump has enacted an executive order to ban TikTok from the US, claiming that it's probably part of a Chinese espionage network. But really, we know it's because the Zoomers trolled the shit out of them. Guys, Donald Trump is having a rally next week and it's free. All you have to do is give your phone number and you can get two tickets. So I got two tickets, but I totally forgot that I have to pick every individual piece of land off of my room floor and I accidentally just verified it too so that means there's gonna be at least two empty spots and another thing guys if you are doing it make sure to use the right zip codes just so that they know you are in the area okay in all seriousness though tensions between Trump and China have continued to grow and now TikTok's parent company ByteDance is forced to either close up shop or sell its US operations to an American company by September 15th. And hey, what do you know? Microsoft is interested. So if you're anything like me, you probably enjoy some of TikTok's content and recognize its value in current society, but you probably don't even have the app and could probably live without it. I just want us to be considerate here. With 2020 as bad as it is already, let's not take the last safe haven on the internet away from these kids. So I know everyone's talking about TikTok at the moment and yeah, yeah, poor Zoomers or whatever, but video games are really at stake here. Seriously, caught in the crossfires of this whole mess, Donald Trump is also going after WeChat, which is owned by Tencent. And Tencent is the largest video game company in the world. Not only do they have that new Pokemon MOBA coming out for the Switch, but they own League of Legends and Valorant outright. They also own 40% of Epic Games and Fortnite. Okay, now back to the video. If you're on board with giving TikTok the boot and prefer having American companies scoop up your data instead, well, there's a solution for you in Instagram as they just released their version of TikTok Reels. Since I haven't tried Reels for myself, if you have, let me know. Is 2020 saved or is Bill Gates our final hope? Let me know if you don't give a f but please do so in the comments. Oh yeah, and speaking of Instagram, founder of its parent company, Mark Zuckerberg, has now joined the rare $100 billion gang, along with Jeff Bezos and, well hey, what do you know? It's Bill Gates. I don't know, I mean, just a fun fact, what do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments. That's the end of the show. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna try to pump these out faster. Just trying to stay motivated. It's kind of hard right now. Quarantine life, you know what it is. If you guys enjoyed it, like the video, give me a comment, join my Discord, talk to me. Follow me on Twitter, I guess. Actually, who cares? Follow me on Twitch. I'll go live sometime. And I love you guys. Oh, also. I, I do want to show off this beer. Yeah, it's it's a sick can, but I, I do know you know I'm I'm kind of a I'm kind of a beer guy. So like I and I went I like studied abroad in Belgium.
Yeah, I know this. It's a Belgian beer, a Belgian white. And I love this. Cheers. Happy fucking stay at home. Ugh.